Hello everyone. In this video, we shall learn how to write the chemical formulas of ionic compounds. In order to ease your understanding of this video, you need to be fully abreast of the chemical formula of monoatomic and polyatomic ions, including their valences. These have been clearly explained in previous videos, the link of which are currently being displayed. Note that the scope of this video does not cover the complex inorganic compounds or organic compounds. The simple steps to follow are carefully outlined in the red box. We would apply these steps to write the chemical formula of these 13 names of compounds. Without further ado, let's begin. Number one, it says write the chemical formula of ion 2 chloride. So we would apply these rules here in the red box. If you look at the compound, we'll see that there are two components which are the cation and the anion. The cation component is ion 2. While the anion component is the chloride, combining it together we get the compound ion 2 chloride. Now we'll go ahead to write the symbol of this cation and anion. Ion 2 is Fe2, while chloride ion is Cl. The next step is to write the valency of these cations and anions and also ignore the charges. So the valency of ion in this case is 2, while the valency of chloride in this case is 1. Ignoring the charges implies that we would not write 2 plus, rather we we'll just write 2. Also, we wouldn't write minus 1, rather we we'll just write 1. Moving to the next step, we'll see if we could simplify further the valencies. The valency here is 2 and 1. First, we assume that they are in a ratio format. So then, we check if we can simplify them further. These 2 and 1 are the lowest possible whole number that can be gotten between them. So this cannot be further simplified. So the next thing, which is to exchange the valences by cross multiplication. Writing, we have Fe2 and Cl1. Because 1 is just unitary, we wouldn't write it down. We would assume that there's an invisible 1 there. So then we cross multiply these valences. Initially, these valences are written as superscripts. There's a 2 written as a superscript on ion Fe. And there is a one, invisible one, written as a superscript on chloride. So we exchange them by cross multiplying. After cross multiplying, we'll write them as subscript. So Fe would take one, while Cl is going to take two. But remember that we said we don't usually show one. I just showed it here so that we can understand how the cross multiplication took place. We then write Fe Cl two. This is the chemical formula for iron 2 chloride. So having successfully written the chemical formula for iron 2 chloride, we insert it into the box here as FeCl2. So the next thing is to write the chemical formula for iron 3 chloride. Like we did previously, the first step is to write out the cation and the anion. And so we write the symbol of iron 3 as Fe3 plus and chloride ion should be Cl minus. Next, we write the valency and ignore the charge. So in the case of ion three, that would be three, while for chloride, that would be one. We assume three and one to be a ratio, so three ratio one. Now check whether we could simplify further three ratio one. And as you can see, we cannot simplify three ratio one further, except we are ready to get a decimal. We leave it as it is. 3 and 1. So we are left with Fe superscript 3 and chloride superscript 1. So we then cross multiply by exchanging this valency. So the superscript on ion would be transferred to chloride, while the superscript 1 on chloride would be transferred to ion. So after the exchange of valency, we would have something like this Fe1Cl3. So remember, like we earlier mentioned, that we don't write the 1. It's kind of invisible. So we will be left with something like this, FeCl3. So we have successfully written the chemical formula for ion 3 chloride. So we insert it in the box here, FeCl3. Moving to the next, which is number 3, the chemical formula for copper 1 oxide. The cation is copper 1, while the anion is the oxide ion. So the symbol for copper 1 is Cu+, plus, while the symbol for oxide is O2-. minus. You know the drill. We write the 
valency ignoring the charges so here for copper one plus the valency is one ignoring the charge while for the oxide ion the valency is two so we assume this to be a ratio and we check if we can simplify further can we simplify further one ratio two that is no so we are left with cu one o two the next thing is to cross multiply or exchange these superscripts of valences the two on the oxide ion is transferred to copper while the superscript one on the copper ion is transferred to oxygen so we are left with cu2 o1 but remember we ignore one whenever it is written then the formula for copper one oxide is properly written as cu2 o quite easily done so we insert it here Number four is copper two oxide. So we write the symbol of copper two, which is Cu two plus, and oxide is O two minus. So we write the valency ignoring the charge in the process. We have two for copper and two for oxide. Can we simplify two ratio two further? Yes, we can. So the simpler form is one ratio one. So now we have something like this: Cu superscript one and O superscript one as well so we cross multiply this one goes to oxygen while the one of oxygen goes to copper so we are left with cuo remember we don't write the one so this is the formula for copper two oxide cuo number five chemical formula for calcium carbonates another name for carbonates is charles carbonates four ion the formula for calcium is ca2 plus while the symbol or formula for carbonate ion is co3 2 minus. So we ignore the charge. The valency of calcium is 2, while the valency of carbonate is 2 as well. We simplify for that, we get 1 ratio 1. We are left with something like this Ca1, Co3, 1. So we cross multiply the superscripts. So we are left with a simple chemical formula of CaCO3 formula for calcium carbonate, otherwise known as calcium trioxocarbonate or so next up, we we'll write the formula for calcium hydrogen trioxide carbonate 4. The formula for calcium is Ca2 plus, while the formula for hydrogen trioxide carbonate 4 is HCO3 minus. Remember that another name for hydrogen trioxide carbonate 4 ion is bicarbonate ion. So Ca2 plus for calcium ion, while HCO3 minus for hydrogen trioxide carbonate 4 ion. So the valency for calcium is 2. The valency for HCO3 minus is 1. We cannot simplify to ratio 1 for that. So we are left with 2, 1, and then CA superscript 2 and HCO3 superscript 1. So we cross multiply the superscript of calcium to go to bicarbonate, while the superscript of bicarbonate to go to calcium. So we are left with CA open bracket HCO3, then close bracket 2. The reason for this is because the two actually belongs to the whole of the bicarbonate ion and not to oxygen alone. So an amateur might make a mistake of writing the formula for calcium hydrogen trioxide carbonate 4 as CAHCO6, multiplying the two only by that of the three of oxygen, which is wrong. This is the correct one. We can also expand the formula of calcium hydrogen trioxide carbonate 4 as CAH2C2. O6 that's having multiplied through the two here by all the components in the brackets of HCO3. So the chemical formula for calcium hydrogen trioxide carbonate 4 is Ca open bracket HCO3 close bracket 2. For number seven, we write the chemical formula for calcium hypochlorite. The formula for calcium is Ca2 plus, and the formula for hypochlorite, if you recall, is OCl minus. The hypochlorite is the anion with one oxygen atom lesser than that of the chloride ion. So the valency of calcium is 2, while the valency of the chloride is 1. So we cannot simplify further, so we leave it as 2, 1. Then we have Ca superscript 2 and OCl superscript 1. So we exchange these superscripts to become subscripts. So we are left with Ca, open bracket, OCl, close bracket 2 because the two belongs to the whole of the hypochlorite ion and not to chlorine alone. 
So this is the chemical formula for calcium hypochlorite. We can expand this to become CaO2Cl2. This is another way to write the chemical formula for calcium hypochlorite. For example number 8, we are told to write the formula for ammonium tetraoxosulfate 6. So the formula for ammonium ion is NH4+, while the formula for tetraoxosulfate 6 ion is SO42-. Mind you, tetraoxosulfate 6 ion is also known as sulfate ion. So the valency for ammonium ion is 1, while the valency for sulfate or tetraoxosulfate 6 ion is 2. But we cannot simplify for that 1 ratio 2. So we leave it as it is. So we are left with NH4 superscript 1 while we have SO4 superscript 2. We exchange this superscript of sulfate to that of ammonium and the superscript 1 of ammonium to that of sulfate. So we have open bracket NH4 2 and SO4. There is a bracket showing that the 2 here belongs to the whole of the ammonium ion that is nitrogen and hydrogen and not just to hydrogen alone. So don't make that mistake. It implies that the formula for ammonium sulfate or ammonium tetraoxide 6 can also be written as N2H8SO4. For number 9, we have magnesium sulfite. So magnesium is Mg2+, while sulfite is SO32-. Remember sulfite is the one that has one oxygen atom lesser than sulfate. So sulfate is SO42 minus, while sulfite is SO32 minus. So the valency of magnesium is 2, while the valency of sulfite is as well 2. So can we simplify 2 ratio 2 further? Yes, we can. To become 1 ratio 1. So we are left with Mg superscript 1 and SO3 superscript 1. So we exchange this simplified valencies and we have something like this. So this is the chemical formula for magnesium sulfide, MgSO3. Don't get bored with the multiple examples I cited because I'm trying to make us versatile with the writing of this chemical formula and to make it easy for us to recall. So moving on to number 10, we have aluminum nitride. The symbol for aluminum ion is Al3+, while the nitride ion is N3-. minus. The valency for aluminium is 3, while the valency of nitride is as well 3. Can we simplify 3 ratio 3 further? Yes, we can. So 3 ratio 3 can be simplified further to become 1 ratio 1. So we are left with AL superscript 1 and N superscript 1. So we exchange this. So we have AL N. So this is the simple formula for aluminium nitride. AL N. Moving on to number 11, which is aluminium hydroxide. So aluminium is Al3+, while the hydroxide ion is OH-. So the valency for aluminium is 3, while the valency for hydroxide ion is 1. So we cannot simplify 3 ratio 1 further, so we leave it as it is. So we are left with Al3 and OH superscript 1. So we exchange these valencies. So we, we get Al, open brackets, OH, close bracket, 3. So this is the chemical formula for aluminium hydroxide. So moving on to number 12, we are, we are asked to write the chemical formula for potassium heptaoxodichromate 6. Heptaoxodichromate 6 ion is also known as the dichromate ion. So this could as well be written as potassium dichromate. So the chemical formula for Potassium ion is K+, plus, while the chemical formula for heptaoxodichromate 6 ion is Cr2072-. So the valency for potassium is 1, while the valency for heptaoxodichromate 6 ion is 2. We cannot simplify for that 1 ratio 2, so we leave it as it is. We are left with K1, K superscript 1, and Cr207 superscript 2. Then we exchange the simplified valencies. So we get K2Cr2O7. So this is the chemical formula for potassium heptaoxodichromate 6. Applying the law of mathematics, even though it's not commonly written as, as such, we could factorize this and we write this chemical formula as open bracket KCR close bracket 2. 
because both potassium and chromium has two so we can factorize it and bring out the two it will now be open bracket kcr close bracket 207 this is another way to write the chemical formula of potassium dichromate so the last on the list is the chemical formula for lead acetate remember that another name for acetate is actually ethanoate ion so the chemical formula for lead ion is pb2 plus while for acetate ion is ch3 coo minus actually gotten from ethanoic acid or acetic acid so we ignore the charge the valency of lead is two while the valency of acetate ion is one then we have pb superscript two and acetate ion ch3 coo1 superscript one so then we cross multiply we are left with something like this pb remember the two here belongs to the whole of the acetates so we are left with pb open brackets ch3 coo close brackets two so this is the chemical formula for lead acetate otherwise known as lead ethanoate So here are 10 questions you can practice on your own to test your understanding of the topic. You can leave your answers in the comment section and I will do my best possible to assess them for you. That brings us to the end of this video. If you found it beneficial, please click on the like button and help me benefit others by sharing the video widely. You can also leave your comments in the comment section below. And lastly, do not forget to click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification so that you can be the first person to get alerted when I release a new video. Thank you.